Recently, I've built quite a few bikes and I've had countless comments and questions on those videos asking for updates. So in this video, I'm gonna give you an update on where I'm at with those bike builds, if they're good, if they're not, and what I have coming in the pipeline. Let's start with the Rinna Scouter all road bike. Now the status needs finishing. Now this build is, well, it's still simmering on the back burner. We are close to crossing the finish line on this one, but I've got pretty annoyed with it at times, so I just stopped. Don't hate me. You see, the Rinna Scouter has been somewhat of a mechanical conundrum. Everything is primed and ready to hit the road, but there's a snag with the L2 hydraulic group set. And when I say snag, I mean, it's been a little bit more than mildly annoying. This group set is a bit like a Rubik's Cube you had as a kid. It's a puzzle, a challenge, and frankly, it's been driving me up the wall, trying to dial in the braking system. I was getting very frustrated with it, so I had to set it aside for a moment, you know, to kind of save my sanity. But fear not, I'm not throwing in the towel on this one. The Rinna Scouter all road bike is not a quitter as I really wanna see how the frame performs. So I'll be revisiting this mechanical enigma soon. And rest assured, I'll get it up and running. The bike deserves its moment in the sun. Moving on to the Els for Laugh Pro 2022. And the status of this bike is complete and I use it occasionally. Now this bike was built last year in 2022 and it is an absolute stunner. In fact, it's probably my favorite in terms of aesthetics with that custom chameleon paint job. It's a head turner, it's a conversation starter. I mean, who wouldn't notice a bike that looks like it's constantly changing color? And as a bit of a personal touch, you may have noticed my name plastered across the bike. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what I thought I was doing when I made that decision, but there it is for everyone to see. Last year, I was pretty much glued to the saddle of the Falaf Pro. I took it for countless spins, really got to know it inside and out. However, once I built the newer Falaf Evo 2023 model, my ride time on the Pro has dwindled. Now more on the 2023 Evo in a little bit. But let's not overshadow the merits of the Falaf Pro. It's a fantastic frame and a brilliant purchase. It's a perfect example of getting a top-notch quality frame and performance without breaking the bank. The ride is smooth, it feels great, and overall, it's done a stellar job so far. That said, the Sensor Empire Pro group set that's on it is just not on the same level as like my Shimano 105 group set, for example. It's not horrible by any means, but it lacks a certain spark. It gets the job done, but it doesn't exactly set my world on fire. One of my major gripes is with the cable routing into the levers. When you're using compressionless cables, the ideal route is into the top of the shifter so that the cable isn't bent. Now, unless you've nailed it completely flush, you're gonna feel a bump where your palm hits the bars, hits the hoods. To me, it just doesn't make sense, that design. It's not the most comfortable setup. That could be down to the way I installed the cables, but wrestling with compressionless housing isn't as straightforward as it may seem when rooting it through the bars as well. But don't let these few issues distract from the fact that this bike is truly spectacular in many ways, and the frame is awesome. The narrow bars and the aero frame combined together to tuck you in, creating this incredible sensation of unity with the bike. Next up, the light carbon gravel bike, and the status is finished. So let's shift gears and venture off the beaten path on to the gravel path. Now this bike is not just a bike, it's a beast basically. In the roughly 100 miles that I've wrapped up on it so far, it's shown itself to be a sturdy and dependable tank. The 43 mil Gravel King tires on this beast are pure delight. They just eat up the rough terrain and ask for seconds. It's like they've got an insatiable appetite for gravel and dirt. Now I do have a bit of a quibble with the bike sizing. The bike is a size 52, but I can't shake this feeling that I'm actually reaching for the bars a bit when I'm in the saddle. It's a tad frustrating, especially when I compare it to my other bikes that fit me like a glove. But setting that minor gripe aside, the rest of the bike is awesome. I'm particularly impressed with the Sensor SRX Pro 1x11 speed group set that I snagged from AliExpress for a cool £218. It feels solid and reliable. One of the standout features is the chain stabiliser that's integrated into the rear derailleur. What it does is keep the chain taut, eliminating any excess sort of slack and flappy in the chain. And what you're left with is a chain that's basically solid and it, you're not disturbed by the drive chain or feel like it's being clunky when you're going over bumps or rough terrain. Much like the Falaf Pro, this bike also has an issue with the cable routing into the shifter, but it's not as prominent. The one by drive chains means there's one less cable to worry about. 
As for the light carbon gravel wheels, they have been absolutely rock solid. They partner up brilliantly with the 43mm Panaracer Gravel King tyres in a tubeless setup. So all in all, the light carbon gravel bike is a solid contender in the world of gravel grinding. It's built to take a beating, and it feels like that, and it wants to come back for more, which is exactly what you need when you're exploring the road less travelled or commuting through London roads. On to the Giant Defy Advanced 1 and the status of this, it needs some love. Now we are stepping back into memory lane with this bike and it holds a special place in my heart. The 2016 Giant Defy Advanced 1, this is the OG, the bike where it all started. Now I shelled out £850 for it back in 2019 and since then we've journeyed through about 15,000 plus miles together we're connected. Now the ride comes with mechanical disc brakes and hefty rims, not exactly top of the line stuff. It's also a little bit too big for me, a fact I discovered during my bike fit video. Do you know what though, despite its flaws and its need for some TLC, it currently needs bar tape and could do with a decent scrub down. I can't help but love this thing. It's been a reliable companion that's delivered nothing but good times on the road. The Ultegra group set has not skipped the beat once, although it did replace the chain rings and cassette around 7,000 miles ago. However, as the reality of cycling goes, I've since acquired bikes that are newer, nicer to ride, and most importantly, a better fit. So they are more comfortable to ride as a result. This old friend of mine has been somewhat relegated to the back burner, hanging nicely in the summer house. Perhaps I should strip it down, give it a proper clean, and set it up as a shrine in the newly landscaped garden, a kind of monument to the bike that started it all. I'm, uh, I'm sure my fiance would totally be on board with that. Up next, a Kinesis cross light gravel bike, and the status for this is probably looking for a new home. Now this bike hasn't featured that much on the channel, but it has seen its fair share of adventure. Now I bought this bike second hand in 2021 when I was living in the bustling heart of East London. This bike served as my escape and allowed me to venture into the serene countryside. Its aluminium frame has held up admirably throughout our rides together. One thing that continually surprises me about this bike is how good the single piston brakes are. For some reason, they pack a serious punch when it comes to stopping power. Every time I ride it, I'm taken back, just how much control I have. The tire setup is a bit of a mixed bag, 43 millimeter Panaracer Gravel King on the front and 35 mil on the rear for clearance, basically. Now, as much as I love this bike and despite my attachment to it, it's probably time to find a new home for the Kinesis Cross Light Gravel Bike. So if you're looking for a bike with character, a storied past and a good dose of charm, drop me a message. Let's move on to the Els for Laugh Pro 2023 and the current status is this is my daily ride. I promise you a complete and detailed review of this bike is coming soon, but I wanna get some more miles on it so I can give you a well round and broad sort of overview of where I'm at and how I feel towards it. But for now, this is where I'm at. Starting off with the integrated 38 centimeter bars, they're not only aesthetically pleasing, but also functional and they're comfortable to grip. There's something about this bike, much like the Falaf Pro, that makes me feel totally at one with it. The relationship between me and the machine is probably thanks to the precise bike fit. Now this bike quite literally is the perfect fit for me. From my bike fit, I've taken all the measurements and set it up perfectly. Now I had the opportunity to get a Shimano 105 group set for 450 pounds, which is still a fair amount of money and I'm glad I bit the bullet. This group set has been performing flawlessly. The gear changes are precise and fluid and the hydraulic braking system provides excellent control and responsiveness. I would definitely recommend. One unexpected gem on this bike has been the 32 millimeter tires. Whoppers, right? They've added a level of comfort that has been surprisingly beneficial, particularly on the rougher and unpredictable London roads. These tires may not be the first choice for racers, but for my everyday riding, they've proven to be a fantastic addition. So far, after covering approximately 300 miles, the Els Falaf Evo 2023 has been a great ride. Now, any questions on any of the bikes that you've seen so far, this is your chance to ask a question. Drop me a comment below. I will do my best to answer every single question. So that's what I've done, but what's coming up? What's in the pipeline? Now I have a new frame coming from Elves, which is going to be a full build. That's gonna be a good one. I'm excited about that one actually. I also have a new frame from Yeolio, which may or may not have been in the hands of Rob at Carbon Bike Repair. Q 
keep your eyes peeled for that video. I'll also have a couple more frames on the way from Yolio and I've got something interesting to do there. So that's another good video I have in the pipeline. Then finally, I have the giant TCR Advance 2, which has had four repairs from Carbon Bike Repair, including the damage that I caused. Now I'll be building this frame up into a fully functioning bike and see how it performs even with all those carbon repairs. So I'm intrigued to see that as well and see how that bike performs. I know having these bikes and plans for more bikes is a very fortunate position to be in. So I wanted to say a big thank you to you guys for watching my videos first, because without you giving your time and attention, none of this would be possible. To be honest, I had no idea I would get to this point with, with these bikes and doing this sort of video. Um, but I'm super happy with where we are and I'm looking forward to seeing how far I can take it um, in the future one step at a time but we're going in the right direction so thanks again you guys make it all possible and I will see you in the next video